G'day golfers and welcome to the beautiful Stonecutters Ridge Golf Club. Well, we've got a wet, wild and windy day here, so it's a perfect opportunity to show you our low shots. So today's video is titled Punch Shot versus Knockdown Shot versus the Tiger Woods Stinger. We've had quite a few requests of us to show our viewers how to hit those low shots. For some, it's about hitting under a tree or getting out of the trees. For others, it's wanting to learn how to play that low shot into the wind to a tight green. So if you're new to this channel, please click the subscribe button. If you want to have notifications of our next videos, hit that little bell and we'll get stuck right in. Okay, let's start with the punch shot. I'm on the 14th hole here. I've got a shot of 85 meters. I've got a big tree in the way, so I can't go over it. So I've got an option there of going under that branch. I can play safe out to the right, but I'm gonna have a crack at this. Now, I can't just hit a seven iron through the gap there. It's not gonna stop on the green. This is where we need to get that spin involved so we can get the ball to stop. This is where we need a punch shot. So I want to get the right conditions so that I can hit it low with spin. It's gonna skip a little bit, but then it's gonna check up nicely on that green. Got a gap wedge. Normally I'd hit sand iron from this different distance, but I wanna hit a little bit lower than that. I'm still gonna get enough spin with the gap wedge. The right conditions are, number one, where on the club face do we wanna strike the ball? Where we strike on the club face is really gonna determine how high the ball goes. If we strike the ball up here somewhere on the face and the ball's gonna come out quite high, if we can strike lower down, sort of the bottom three or four grooves, then the ball's gonna still get up in the air, but low enough to get under that branch. And we're gonna get plenty of spin from there as well. So if you're striking the ball up here, you're hitting too much turf going underneath it. Dynamic loft. This club here is 50 degrees, which is obviously gonna go straight into the tree. And, and that's if I hit the ball with a vertical shaft. Now, by moving the ball back a little bit, and really pushing the handle, pushing the grip forward, then I'm reducing that dynamic loft. I'm gonna to try to push that down to around 20 degrees. That way we can get the ball coming out a lot lower. And that's, you know, dynamic loft is really gonna determine your launch angle. And the third thing is angle of approach. So with a punch shot, as the name suggests, we wanna hit down on the ball. We're gonna get an angle of approach that's fairly steep. We're gonna hit down on it 10, 12, 15 degrees. Quite a big divot, but that divot's gotta be after the ball. Remember, we wanna strike the ball quite low down. We catch any turf before the ball, I'm gonna hit that tree for sure, if I can reach it. So we're gonna make sure it's hitting down on the ball, a descending angle of attack, hitting the ball first and then the turf. A Little bit of a deeper divot than normal here. Now to do that, we've really got to make sure that the ball's back in our stance. This is an extreme shot. We really want to keep it down so we can get a lot of spin and a lot of stoppage. Hit down on it a lot. I'm going to push that shaft way, way forward, ball back in my stance. And I need to adjust my alignment a little. Because it's so far back in my stance, there's a good chance I'll shove it to the right. So I'm just going to bring this foot out the way a little bit. So I'm a bit more open. Shaft way forward. And there we go, now I've turned my 50 degree wedge into something more like a 25 degree wedge. Hitting down on it as well. Hopefully we get that good contact, crisp strike, impart plenty of spin on the golf ball, but it's gonna come out low and, and buzzing. All right, let's have a go. Gap wedge, 85 meters, ball back in my stance, and I want that good crisp contact, a little bit lower on the face, I wanna get right underneath it. And let's see if we can get under that tree. Oh, I just clipped it, but I'm very happy with that. Plenty of spin and give me a chance to make him a birdie. Right, that's the punch shot. Now this is the knockdown shot. I'm on the 18th. I'm into a stiff head breeze, about 30K an hour, about 20 mile an hour. I've got 130 meters. Now, normally that's a nine iron for me. Today, six iron. That's right, six iron. That's the mistake a lot of golfers make is they try to, when they're into the wind, they try to hit it too hard, they're generating too much spin. What we want here now is the opposite to the punch shot. We want a knockdown shot where there's less spin. We want less spin to just stabilize that flight into the wind. If we hit that hard, punchy type of shot with a lot of spin, it's gonna climb up into the wind and we're gonna lose some control. So we're gonna play a less than full powered shot so that we can reduce the amount of spin. So it's gonna come out a little bit lower 
but it's going to stabilize into that wind and that's what we're really looking for. So as I said, I'm just going to reduce the power here. So shorter swing both back and through, sort of a three quarter pitch shot. Okay, I've seen Greg Norman play six iron from about 90 yards in really high wind conditions in the open. So uh, this is what we're looking for. We still want to hit the ball and then the turf, but we're not taking a big divot this time. I'm not trying to hit down on it, or maybe a little, just slightly. We're just going to burn the grass, just a small divot after the ball. So just a shorter swing than normal. Just like a three quarter pitch, really. A lot of golfers overcomplicate this shot. The only thing that I'm gonna change is the length of the golf swing. That way the ball's gonna come out with less speed than normal, less spin than normal. It's gonna be easier to control into that strong wind. And it's just gonna be an easier shot than everyone makes it out to be. So the ball position's not gonna change either. I'm not gonna move the ball back in my stance. I don't need to hit down on it. I don't wanna hit down on it. I'm still gonna have the ball position slightly forward in my stance where I normally have a six iron. Okay, let's have a go. Normal setup, nice and simple. Ball position slightly forward, and I just want a slightly shorter swing than normal. There we go, see it's, it's got up nice and high and then it's stabilized. It hasn't had too much climbing spin on it. Easy to control, just a shallow divot, just sweeping through the shot. The only thing that I'm changing is the length of the swing, both the back swing and the through swing. That's simple. That's the knockdown shot. This is the way that the really top players, Greg Norman was great in the wind, open championship twice, and this is the way that we played them. Just a shorter back and through swing. It's just like hitting pitch shots. It really is that simple. Don't overcomplicate the knockdown shot. The third and final installment of our three part video on low shots, the Tiger Woods Stinger. Well, to be honest, the first two were pretty easy. The punch shot, the knockdown shot, you don't have to change too much, you don't have to hit it too hard. So it's fairly easy shots, you'll get the hang of them. This one's a bit tougher. So we're looking to hit the ball further and with less spin, and that's a challenge because basically if you hit the ball with more clubhead speed, you're gonna generate more spin and the ball can climb up into the air more easily. So the, the stinger can be used as a tee shot, uh, it can be used as an advancement shot, or if you want to chase one up to the green, uh, into the breeze here, like we have here. Uh, you can use a variety of different golf clubs. Two iron, three iron are ideal. Some people use a three wood with it, hybrid. Probably the, the two iron is, is the best. I've got a three iron here. And as I said, we're, we're looking to hit the ball as far as we can with as little spin as we can. And that's a bit tricky. So we're gonna do a couple of things in the setup here and we're actually gonna see if we can hit a little bit of draw on this shot. Why? Well, a draw doesn't backspin as much as a fade. Trying to hit a fade stinger is, <laughs> I don't know anyone can do that. Even Tiger Woods will hit a little draw when he's hitting this shot because it makes sense. It's gonna come out with a little bit less launch angle, a little bit lower, a little bit less spin and it's gonna run a bit further. So we definitely want to hit this shot with a little bit of draw. It's all about getting the setup right so this is what we're going to do. We're going to move the ball back slightly, not right off the back foot like the punch shot, but instead of being forward in the stance, we're just going to move the ball back slightly. We still want to reduce dynamic loft, so that means getting the handle, getting the grip forward. But here's the key, it's no good gripping the glove here and then pushing it forward because he's just going to leave the face open and there's that fade. So what we're going to do here is push the shaft forward, then hold the club. So we're going to hold the club in a slightly different position that's going to effectively help us to maintain that low dynamic loft through impact, get the little draw that we're after, and still get plenty of distance. So what we want to feel here, we're not going to hit down on it a lot like the punch shot. We want to feel like we're sweeping through here. As I said, this is a tougher shot. It's a lot more complicated than just hitting the punch shot. We want to be shallow, but with very low dynamic loft. This uh, is 20 degrees loft, so we're going to see if we can get that down to more like 10. What else are we going to do in the setup? Well, not a lot. I'm still going to aim at my target, but because the ball's back in my stance, it's going to send off to the right there a little bit, and then hopefully get that little draw back onto the target. 
Now, here's the bad news. You need power. Okay, you can't hit a stinger without power. You just can't. So if you really want to increase the amount of power that, that you're outputting, then pop up to the little note in the corner there and watch our video on developing more power, more ground force energy. All right, so back to our setup. Slightly back in the stance. Shaft well forward. Still aligning to my target. And, and that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna go for that full power turn. Really going to send some power through the shot here. And let's uh, knock it down the fairway, nice and low. Shaft forward, then grip the golf club. Aiming at my target. Powerful swing. Just what I was looking for there. Started off the right hand side nice and low, running up, chasing up. Won't quite get to the green, I'm too far out. But I've achieved the result I'm looking for. Controlled shot into the breeze, still getting some good distance. And, and that's going to go further than a high three wood or high five wood into the wind because it's got that penetrating trajectory, not a lot of spin, a little bit of draw, and plenty of that roll. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you like learning about these three different low shots that you can hit, the punch shot, the knockdown shot, and the stinger. If you do like this video, please hit the thumbs up. More importantly, we'd love to hear from you. What would you like our next video to be on? what shot is making your life more difficult out in the golf course. Please pop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Are you the best golfer you can be? So I've just got it forward in my stance here. Same ball position as normal. Oh man, cannot see. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you like this video and the three different shots that you can hit in this.